the best here, the best. We're sitting in a flat in West London with boxes and boxes of the UK's most popular legal high. It's called CAT, it's from Kenya, and right now the UK government are trying to make it illegal. A proposal by the United Kingdom to ban CAT or MIRA is now causing jitters among farmers, traders and stakeholders in the MIRA business. CAT is a mild stimulant which grows on trees across East Africa. To most drinkers and drug users in the UK, the effects of CAT are so minor that they'd barely register. But for the Somali community in Britain, it's a way of life. Every night, thousands of UK-based Somali men head to their nearest mafriche or chewing cafe to chew CAT and watch TV. Except that looks set to end, because in July 2013, the British Home Secretary, Theresa May, announced her plans to ban the stuff. She's not the only one suspicious of CAT. In the US, it's been illegal for 20 years, and it's banned in most countries across Europe. Anti-cat campaigners claim the drug destroys families, risks people's lives, funds crime, Somali piracy, and even the Somali terrorist group responsible for the Westgate terror attacks in Kenya, Al-Shabaab. Certain sections of the press have followed the government's lead, getting excited about this supposed jihadist legal high. But people who grow, import, and take the stuff insist that it should be thought of more like coffee and less like the end of the world. We went to meet the largest cat importer in the UK, who understandably is freaking out about his livelihood being criminalized. That's why, with the help of the Kenyan government, he's taking the British lawmakers to court. I started doing cat self-employed in 2008. To reach in this position, it took me a lot of my time. I started from nowhere. And uh, seeing somebody taking it away from you, you won't feel happy. Where do you import the cat from? We are importing it from Kenya, Nairobi. Today's shipment, we have got about 5,128 kilos. The ban on cat will presumably be disastrous to your business. Most of the people who are employed, they will go jobless. I'll be out of job. So this is the biggest cat warehouse in Europe, and the biggest delivery of the week's just arrived. It's getting unloaded behind me, and it's going to be sorted in there, and then it's going to go in those cars over there, and it's going to be driven all around Britain. It's going to be driven to Manchester, to Bristol, to Southampton, even to Devon, we've heard. Clearly, Britain's cat diaspora goes far and wide. Amazingly, every piece of cat shifted from that warehouse in Heathrow was sitting on a tree in the middle of nowhere in Kenya less than 48 hours ago. In fact, Kenya, where cat is known as Mira, supplies so much cat to the UK that whole regions are economically reliant on the trade. One such place is Eastleigh in Nairobi, a huge suburb of the Kenyan capital, most recently famous as the alleged base of the terrorists behind the Westgate Mall attack in September. Populated mostly by ethnic Somalis, it's also a place which runs to the beat of the cat trade. People here rely on cat, both for employment and entertainment. Okay, so this is the mirror repackaging workshop. There's about 50 people around here bundling it up, and this is one of about 10 hangers all around this place. This is the finished. This is before packaging to the cartons. These are the casual laborers. They earn every day the daily bread from the mirror. So much mirror just comes to this place constantly. Came in about 10 minutes ago. Place was full, everyone was wrapping. Uh, and now another one of the trucks has stopped off and another delivery is happening. How much of this whole business, all of this stuff around here that we've seen, yeah. is for the UK market? Everything here is for the UK market. All of this? All of it. All of the hangers. And how much money comes from the UK here? On a cost of investment, I think they, it's about uh, 2 billion Kenyan money a year. You're a billionaire? Mm. Uh, not yet. <laughs> I'm young, I'm, I'm new to the job. But, uh, we are trying before Teresa interferes. <laughs> and you pay tax to the UK government as well, don't you? Taxes we paid there, we paid our, our, our taxes here. Yeah. In the UK, some people claim that the money that comes from the cat funds terrorism. Oh, that is uh, the most unsubstantiated uh, statement I've ever heard from that part of the world. Mira business can never at any one time uh, fund terrorism because the terror guys, the extremist guys are against Mira for the first time. 
they don't accept anything concerning me that they say if you chew me you are doing the haram it's like an abomination to God so how can something that they don't even allow in their description of Islam then take the money again and find the terror I think that is a misnomer it's not there it's a legit business it's a legit business it is just that uh, some few extremists uh, from our communities are trying to fight the mirror because of their own system. There are own issues with the mirror. So we have to fight the misabuse of mirror, but we cannot uh, categorize mirror as a handful of yeah. All of this stuff that's been packed into this van is all headed for London. This is London's weekly cat supply. So clearly the UK does have something of a cat habit. We're about halfway through a five-hour journey from Nairobi to a place called Meru. Now Meru is a place which has been growing cat for at least 300 years. And it's also the place where about 90% of all other cat is grown that eventually ends up in the mouths of UK citizens. When the UK ban actually kicks in, the region's going to go from being one of the richest in Kenya to being broke. So this is the middle tree, and you have to climb it to pick it, right? Yeah? As far as my mate seems to be telling me, what you do is you climb to the top and you pick the youngest, like, little stems. And that's the cat. That's a fresh cat. And how long have you been growing uh, Mira? All my life. All your life? Yes. My great, great, great grandfathers have been selling it. And some of the Mira I have, belongs to them. But that one is definitely one of the oldest ones. Does the older the tree make the better mirror? You remember the wine? Yeah, okay. The older the wine, <laughs> the better the wine. The better the wine. Okay. So the older the mirror, the sweeter. The sweeter it is. Yeah, the sweeter it is. That's the fresh. Yeah. It's sweet. So, I mean, it's very sweet. Go. Yeah. Every day, the mirror is going all over the world. If it's banned in the UK, I'm telling you, it will affect us economically. Okay. Yes. We want to make money. It will affect every sector really? of uh, economy in the Meru community. You take a lot of uh, joy in growing Meru, don't you? Yes. This is what, uh, what, this is how I've been living. Yeah. If you're unable to export to the UK anymore because it was made illegal, do you mm -hmm. think that Many people around here will lose their jobs? A lot of people will lose their jobs. Thousands. So that's why we want British people to just have second thought about the mirror. 80% of the mirror income comes from cut. If Arabs don't sell petrol, can they survive? You can't. Now we are giving money for the, the, for the case. You are? Mm. So it's quite a big deal to have a farmer in Kenya paying for a, a case to stop a law being passed in London. It shows that it's really... It's serious. Important. Mm. Yeah, we want to fundraise about 13 million shillings. Okay. Mm. It's ambitious. Very. Really? Apparently, 80% of their money comes from export. And considering that the UK is one of the very last places they can actually export to that's not in East Africa, it's going to have a real bad effect on them. It's funny how a decision that affects such a small group of people in the UK can have such a large effect for an entire community all the way in Kenya. So these guys behind me just pick their stuff, they're bundling it up to stick it in a truck and send it into town to get sorted before it's sent off all, uh, all around Kenya. Yeah, the driver's antsy though, because he wants to leave. He's got to get to Nairobi. I guess all the cat fans are kind of waiting for their gear, not to mention the ones in London and Birmingham and in Glasgow. Because cat dries out so quickly, the entire trade is done in a manic hurry. There's no point in getting old cat to the UK, so everything relies on speed. In fact, these trucks sped so fast down the roads from Meru to Nairobi that we lost them in about 15 minutes. One of the biggest weapons of the anti-cat movement has been the supposed link between the trade and terrorism. US and British counter-terror officials have claimed the trade is linked to Al-Shabaab, but studies by the UK's Advisory Council on the Misuse of Drugs and experts from the UN have found little or nothing to support this. Al-Shabaab seem more likely to behead cat sellers and late last year captured and burned a big cat delivery in southern Somalia. When we asked some of the local guys who worked packaging the drug about Al-Shabaab, they claimed that the ban would in fact drive people towards the terrorist group. 
You know, these boys here, if they, they burn Mera, if they burn Mera, we don't have anything to find, okay? And the people from Somalia, they come to Pumuani. They brainwash us. They say, we can give you money to turn to become Al-Shabaab, okay? We'll become Al-Shabaab because we don't have anything. And this mayor itself us. Well, it's bring up food on the table. So while we've been here, a lot of people have been talking about how the ban isn't going to make any difference because people are going to smuggle it anyway. And we've heard that some people in here's tiny little building in Eastleigh smuggle it to the States on a weekly basis. So if it gets banned in the UK, will you, do you think you'll then traffic it to the UK illegally? <laughs> So how much money can you make a week uh, smuggling cat at the moment? And do you reckon that amount will go up if it's banned in the UK? Will it be more profitable? It's not exactly a sophisticated process, the smuggling of cat. You stick it in a box, you put a blanket on top, and you write a name on it, and you post it to the person who wants it. This is a box of cat being quite easily transported to the United States, where it's been illegal for 20 years. Uh, so I think it's kind of uh, obvious that uh, it's going to be quite easy to get it into London, even if it's illegalized. The next morning, we woke up to see the day's cat arrive. The truck from Mao has just arrived. Uh, one stop en route to London, but some of the local deliveries being uh, thrown out as well. All the bags have names written on them, and he's screaming out the names and throwing them out to the people in the crowd, uh, and there's a bit of a scrum going on. The only time in the entire cat journey when anyone seems to chill out is when they're actually chewing the stuff. Now everyone's running off looking really happy that they've got their cat in. Although there do seem to be some kind of anti-cat protesters. Maybe they've just heard that we're here and they're coming up to preach their sobriety story. You know, it's a bug drug. I was used 16 years and it stopped one day. You test you yourself now and then you become a great. <laughs> some people say that it's, yeah, it's bad for the family. Yes, your wife you don't have sex. Really? Because you're mirror. You think mirror spams all of you. There was a guy here earlier saying that it was really bad for you. I think for the crazy guy, I think for his head is bad. Oh, okay, okay. That's the best stuff. The best, yeah, the best. How much? How much? You made it. Thousand six hundred. This is fifty dollar. Oh, yeah. You UK, you cannot buy this one. You <laughs> can. Nice, horrible. Everyone's taking my stuff. The cafes where people chew cat are called mafrishas. It's these places which cats the cries have become fixated upon. According to the press, they're aggressive hubs of drug use, terrorist recruitment farms, and have close links to the criminal underworld. In a dusty corner of Eastleigh, we were taken to a compound in an old fairground where several mafrishas had set up. It was all a bit like something from the Warriors. Is this where you come and hang out? Yeah, the place of Shisha yeah. and Mira. We enjoy until the morning. And you guys just hang out and chat and chill? Yeah, we are chewing, we are listening to music. It's a cool vibe, man. Yeah, yeah. welcome in time. Oh, thanks very much, man. So this is it. This is what the British government are afraid of. This is as bad as it gets. It's a whole bunch of people hanging out, getting a bit buzzy and having a nice time. It's actually just really like friendly and chilled out. It's a good vibe, right? Yeah, we're having a nice time. The most famous of all the anti-cat campaigners in the UK is Abukar Awale, a UK Somali who says he once struggled with his own cat addiction. He's been to Downing Street to discuss the drug and now broadcasts a TV show to Somalia and the world from which he preaches his anti-cat message. I'm very happy to host and welcome Mr. Alex. Welcome to the show and it's your turn to question. Thanks very much for having me. Um, so you're seen in the UK as probably the, probably the most uh, high profile of all the anti-cat campaigners. Why is it that you believe so strongly that it should be banned here? Cat is a drug and it should be banned across the globe. And I'm glad 
the countries like United States of America and Canada and the rest of Western world like Germany, Sweden, Finland have already banned it. And God save the Queen. Finally, the UK is going to ban it and we welcome that. I have met some young women and some campaigners mm. who have been really, really keen for it to be banned. But the huge majority of the Somali community that I've spent time with uh, have been upset and angry, angered about I don't it. agree with you, and I think that's not the accurate information. The Somali community has been celebrating since the call of the ban. Mm -hmm. There has been gatherings, there has been songs has been made. The Somali communities are praying for the ban. It's very funny, coming from non cut user, white man, you know, telling the community, God, it's not good for you, or it's good for you, when the community themselves are saying, we had enough of this drug. I'm not saying whether it's good or not, I'm just looking into it. Uh, however, the message that I'm hearing from the community is mixed. And I don't believe that people beyond the community have any understanding of what the situation is. I think they've been led by rather extremist articles in newspapers like the Daily Mail. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much right. for coming. Thanks very much for having me. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to stop there, but I hope to see you next time. I'm the bus driver. It's a stressful job with the traffic jams and all that kind of stuff. After our work, our very stressful day, mm. we come here and relax and chill. Chill with friends, watch football, socialize. Yeah, yeah. yeah we don't see any problem whatsoever with. Uh, with our normal life, it doesn't affect us whatsoever. It's something that we chew from home. As we are here, we thought, yes, why, 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 why don't we have it here as well? It's simple as this: if the British people are told you will never ever have a pub or you'll never go to the pub, I think it will affect. You. They are intruding into our social life. I, I believe it's one of the major things which is good for the community. Some people say that it's bad for the family. I can see how it might be, though, but uh, in the same way that. You know, anything okay, where a group of guys hang out together rather than see their wives. Nobody chills here until morning, no. Everybody after 11 o'clock goes home. Yeah, yeah. For the younger people, we believe child is, is part of the, of, the, of, the, of the social thing which is keeping them away from trouble. The government misunderstood the whole concept of the child. People made it look worse than it is. I think that having spent quite a lot of time with people whose lives are intertwined with CAT, I can safely say that it isn't a scourge on the human race. However, it is a drug. Let's not be naive. I'm sure it can't be all positive. I can't believe it's particularly good for your health. And I'm sure it does encourage some people to spend less time with their families and more time getting high with their mates. Although I don't really understand why that's an issue the state feels the need to get involved with. I've seen no evidence with it being connected to terrorism. I've seen no evidence to it being connected with violent international crime. In fact, I've seen no evidence with it being connected to any crime in the UK. But the government does seem adamant about banning it. And I kind of hope they don't, because if they do, I think it will just be another sad chapter in the story of the failed war on drugs. <laughs> Chicago, Santa Cruz, 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 Chicago, Santa